Thank you. Both, uh, both very honored and exciting. Uh, excited to uh, be here representing ULM, and I'm um, also very excited to be a part of the Sun Belt Conference for the first time. Uh, it's really exciting for me and um, the opportunity. Uh, what Mr. Benson, Commissioner Benson, and the and the staff are doing with the league, I'm really excited about and uh, looking forward to it for sure. So, start next week. Uh, got a new staff, new team, and uh, we're excited about getting going. Really have been impressed thus far with what our players have been doing, and uh, we're certainly looking forward to getting started on August the 3rd. So. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's pretty common, I think, for coaches. But, um, you know, just trying to, you know, have a process and make sure that it's that you're that you're actually seeing that process moving forward in, in the right direction that it should. But I mean, it started back, you know, in December, really, we get together, getting the coaching staff together, getting to know the players, uh, getting uh, the players, I think, comfortable with what we're doing in the recruiting. You know the whole thing, so yeah. I mean, it's uh, certainly uh, is it, a good analogy, I think, to you know playing catch up. But uh, it's it's been fun. The process has. Do you see any similarities to the program now, and then McNeese when you took over, kind of in that state of flux with them too? Yeah, sorta. I think uh, you know both both programs had tradition, and so does ULM, and uh, you know so I think going in there and. Uh, you know, just, yeah, most of the rebuilding, I guess, processes have all been the same, even back in high school. But it's it's a matter of, uh, you know, getting in, the, the players feeling comfortable with what you're doing and understanding what it is that you're trying to do and, uh, and you know, talking to them, listening to them, you know, and trying to move forward is what I've been, been trying to do. But uh, I think it's always a process because, you know, I've, I've been very, very fortunate to, if you go back and look, I mean, I've actually been a head coach, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, FCS, FBS. It's, you know, the, the, I think there, there are two things that, that I see that are all the same. Number one, it's about relationships. And that's very, very important at any level you coach. And then the second thing that, that I think I've been able to do and hopefully I can do at ULM is one size doesn't fit all. You know, you have to adjust to the situation that you're in. And uh, so... You know, or we're going to do, you know, I mean, the relationships are the same. It's still football, but there are different, a little bit different situations that each one of them I've had. And ULM is a little different situation in terms of, of uh, the others I've had. But, you know, you have to adjust. You're asking the players to adjust. And I think as coaches, you also have to adjust to the situation you're in. That's what we tried to do. Yeah, I remember something you said today you got hired at ULM and we had the presser about how uh, things are never as good as you think they are. And Yeah, I mean, I've always, and I still believe that. I've always thought that. And, uh, you know, because regardless of what you did last year, this is a new year, and it doesn't matter. And what I basically told the players when I got there in the first meeting we had is, you know, we were fortunate enough last year at McNeese to go undefeated, to go. But and then you look at ULM's case last year, you know, we won as many games as ULM actually lost. But nevertheless, if I would have been on – January the 20th, if I would have been in Lake Charles or in Monroe, the conversation's the same. Last year's over. And it doesn't matter. I mean, really, what you did last year, especially today in this profession, it doesn't matter. Last year's last year, and you better you better move forward. And that's what we tried to do. So, yeah, I've always thought that. And, you know, just because you're having success, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily that far ahead of everybody else. And just because you may not be having the success you've had, I mean, look at the turnarounds that have happened here recently just in the Sun Belt, you know. So, I mean, you never really, I don't think, is ever far behind is, is what you think you are, and you're definitely not as far ahead as what you think you are. So. Now, as you compare the Sun Belt for the first time, um, did you have any relationships with the coaches already in the league when you came here? And kind of what's been your impression of the league so far? been very impressed with the league. Uh, uh, I had the opportunity to um, to visit with uh, Commissioner Benson right after I got the job in a in a um, a meet the coach deal we were doing in New Orleans and he came down which I appreciate and 
you know, we had a 15, 20 minute conversation. We was really impressed with him and his vision for the Sun Belt Conference. I obviously know Coach Hudspeth because of uh, the relation, uh, because of the proximity there to Lake Charles, and uh, thank thank the world of him and the job he's done there. I know Blake Anderson uh, because he was at Lafayette at one time, and uh, so I mean I, I know you know Everett Withers, and I go back a pretty good ways. But um, you know I, I had the opportunity to meet all the coaches in May at the uh, at the spring function, and, and was just really really impressed and uh, how friendly and everybody was. Well, I mean, the expectations are to win, and that's regardless of where you are and what the situation is. What I've seen so far from our team is I've seen a really good attitude and a really, um, you know, cooperative group that really that, that wants to do well. Uh, I've never been around any group of kids at any level that they don't that doesn't want to be successful. These kids want to be successful, and so uh, to be honest with you, from a performance standpoint, I'm still. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure that out here as we go forward because, uh, you know, obviously I've seen them in spring training and, and uh, we have talent. I've uh, observed them a little bit in off season. you know, the times that we're allowed to observe them. But uh, a lot of this is going to be new to me too, actually, you know, seeing how they react to August camp, how they, seeing how they react to that type of situation and then getting them out there on Saturdays, you know, and, and actually seeing the kids in action. So, you know, I'm still a little bit, uh, you know, still have a little bit of work to do in that area too because I've never seen them. So, Coach, last year uh, Todd Berry. I'm not sure if this question has been asked, but last year Todd Berry stood here and said how difficult recruiting was for him, in, especially in Louisiana. And you're kind of known for being able to work with uh, whatever guy you can find and being able to recruit Louisiana. Um, how much has that affected uh, you all in the forward? Well, I think uh, recruiting Louisiana. I mean, it's really all I've done. So you know, we've. McNeese was predominantly Louisiana and Southeast Texas is, is a lot of the area that we recruited and uh, everybody in the country comes to Louisiana to recruit. So, you know, obviously we're going to expand the areas a little bit from what we're doing. Uh, you know, in Lake Charles, we could only recruit in three directions because one of the directions was water. So, you know, we could head out in three different directions to go recruit. I have the opportunity to go out in four different directions and recruit. So we're going to expand that from what we did in Lake Charles, but the base of what we want to do is still starts in Louisiana, and uh, and that's not going to change. What do you make of the preseason poll? Well, I think it's I think it's uh, it's very fair because, yeah, I mean me and I've always each each year I was a head coach. You know, you vote, I vote on the the coaches poll, and all I vote off of is last year because I, mean, I don't know. You know, I mean teams change and coaching staffs change and you get additions to your football team. So I don't ever know how to predict it, to be honest with you. So, I mean, what I basically have done every year I've ever voted is I go back and, you know, who, who won it last year? And so, you know, it's, it's where we finished last year, or at least close to that, I guess. And I, I think it's, it's very fair moving forward. And, and uh, that's what I would have done too. So. I'm, I mean, I've, you know, a couple of them have mentioned it to me. I mean, they know that. So, really, uh, what the poll said is not going to change the, the, uh, the first, the first preseason speech. I mean, the first pre-practice speech, you know, that we have, the first meeting we have, or really anything moving forward. But I know they know that, and if it serves as extra motivation, then that's fine too. No, I guess to a certain extent we did start from scratch because it's a whole new coaching style. So it's a whole new system and what we were doing in all phases of the game. But, uh, yeah, and I think it was starting from scratch, so to speak, that basically all the positions were open, you know, when you go out there and stuff. But uh, which is really, you know, it's not a lot different from other years. You know, if you've changed coaches on your staff or coordinators and, you know, which we've done at McNeese before. We've lost offense and defensive coordinators and stuff, and sometimes you have to start over. But, um, you know, it's so far, really, like I said, it's uh, I'm just trying to get to know these players, and they're trying to get to know me, and I think we've made a lot of progress in that area. So I look at it when we start on August the 3rd. To me, it's going to be like I've, I've started with, with these kids their whole career, you know, so. So losing so many starters on defense doesn't really concern you a lot? You know, it's uh, – I guess what's 
about it when you're the coach. When I go in there, these are the players. And I'll see like Adam or somebody or here, you get reminded of that. These are the only players I knew that we had. So the players that we lost from the year before, I don't know them. I bet a couple of them. But so, you know, it, it's not it's, – I don't guess it has the same effect as it would if you were just a fan or you knew the previous players. When I, like I say, when you go in there as a coach, well, okay, who do we have? And that's what you kind of go in there and do. I did watch all the game films last year, but I'm not necessarily, you know, honed in on one or two players. So, you know, I know a lot of these kids played. I guess they weren't the starters or whatever, but that's not really something – you know, I hear that, but that's not really something you focus on when you go in. You're just going in, okay, who do we have? Who are the players? What can we do with these guys? More than, you know, who started last year. That's really not a factor when you're going in trying to do for a first-year coach, if that makes sense. What steps do you need to take to improve the team, not only for this season, but building for the future? Well, that's a great question, really, and uh, I think we'll know more as the season goes on. But there were, there were a few positions that I thought – Numbers-wise standpoint and what you look at, we weren't where we need to be in an FBS program. Offensive line starting, you know, with the first position, really, when you look at the numbers we had and, and in trying to move forward, I thought the skill positions on offense, when you look at those, I think we have the numbers there, a good number to start to move forward. The defensive side of the football, however, the difference is it was is what we want to do on defense. You know, we're short at the linebacker position because we took three of those linebackers and moved them down because our style of defense and what we want to do is in the 425 is more based off of speed than it is size or you know linebackers in the previous defense or more gap pluggers plug the holes or whatever and what we want to do is attack and we want guys we we, we want our linebackers more as run guys guys that can really run and get on the perimeter the other part of it is is the is the 425 is the 5 on the back end if you're going to do that st- that type of defense like we want to you have to have numbers in the secondary so offensive line, defensive backs, to make a long story short, those are the two areas that we looked at that we tried to target at recruiting that we probably still aren't where we need to be in terms of numbers that we have to get, we have to, to get better moving forward. Now, obviously, lost a lot of players, um, but you have some good leadership. Is it, is it balance of leadership with some young players pushing the older players to be better? I think so, and, and uh, that's, you know, that's what you want to get each and every year. I'll say that because you said something about leadership, but one of the things that's, I think that's really helped us move this thing forward is, is guys like the two young men that are here today, Trey Hunter and Jalen Holly. But um, when I got the job, we basically, I basically spent the whole Christmas up there, and you can't recruit. And, but with older kids now that don't necessarily go home for the whole Christmas break because they have leases and apartments there, I got to spend a lot of time with guys like that and not only talking to them but listening to them about what their feelings were and what they thought maybe we could improve on and stuff. And, uh, and I thought that was about as beneficial of time spent with some of these older kids like that that had been a part of the program three or four years. And really just kind of, I said, I talked to them and kind of told them what my vision was moving forward, but I also did a lot of listening too and kind of listened to those guys to kind of see what their experiences have been and, uh, you know, and, and maybe where – they thought we can improve the thing moving forward. So, and I think that's really helped in a sense that those older kids really bought in early to what we were doing, and that's helped us with the younger guys. And uh, injuries in the past few years have been a big problem. Is there anything you can do to try to prevent that? You know, and I mean, I wish I had the the answer to that. You go back and look. There were several years at McNeese, like 2014, that we got hit hard. And <coughs> if you go back and look at 2010, 2011. We weren't we weren't very good at McNeese either in that in that aspect, and um, I spent the better part of two years in the 12 and the 13 season going back. We put together uh, a team of doctors, trainers, wait staff, me, met once a month, went went back, took every injury, whether it was in practice, whether it was a game, put it on tape. What kind of shoes were they wearing? What kind of surface was it? The whole deal. I mean, and took this thing about as far as you can take it. How much did I find out after all that? Not a lot, you know, try, not a lot of definitive things that necessarily, you know, and w- are we hitting too much? Are we not hitting enough? What are we, I mean, we went through that whole deal too. So, you know, I know ULM had a big problem with that last year, and I wish I had the answer. But last year, if you look at, we had a lot of success at McNeese last year, and we didn't want to have any injuries. And same coach, you know, same. So 
I wish I had a more definitive answer of my concern. Absolutely. Every coach is concerned about injuries, but um, hopefully, uh, knock on wood, you know, we can do a little bit better than, 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 than ULM did last year in that area. You know, it's a, <laughs> it's exciting. I think you know, uh, the players love it. I mean, they love the opportunity to go out and play on the biggest stage, and so I always look forward to it. I know each and every year at McNeese when we did, the players, the players loved it. I mean, they they loved uh, the opportunity to go out there. I never, you go back and look at all the years. I never played. Yeah, we did one year in ten. We played LSU and Missouri, and they were both top ten teams at the time we played them. But I always thought it was. It, it never came to fruition in McNeese. I always heard, you know, if you play them, you're going to get guys hurt. We got more guys hurt playing teams below us than we did above us, to be honest with you. I mean, the speed of the game and I don't know, you know, so I, I've been hearing that too, you know, tough schedule. You get all your guys hurt. I'm not sure that how accurate that is. If you go back and you go back and look at McNeese versus LSU, McNeese versus Nebraska, McNeese versus whoever, Texas A&M, we never really got anybody hurt in those games any more than we did in a normal game. So, so. It's two years old. Do you like the idea of a championship game? And oh, yeah. I guess also, are you a, a guy that likes the 18-game season right now, or would you like to play all nine? You know, I never really thought about the eight or nine, to be honest with you. But I love the, the, the championship game concept. I think any, any time, you know, you get opportunity to – I think the first thing it does really is it sets another goal. You know, I mean, you know, you want to win the conference, you want to win their goal, a bowl game, but having the opportunity to get their conference championship game, I think the experience for the players, <coughs> you know, for the fans, I think the I think that's a plus. So, I don't know when the commissioner first brought it up. I mean, I, I thought it was a win-win, you know, situation for everybody in, in terms of getting in that. Uh, I said I, I haven't really thought about the eight or the nine games. You know, we did both in the in the Southland, and you know, last year we went to the nine, whatever. And uh, they, you know, really, either way's fine with me. So. Uh, you mentioned the players buying in early. Do you think that had to do with your, your history of winning, or you know, whether the coach really survived it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you'd have to ha you'd have to ask them really, but. Uh, you know, I think it's just the fact that I said, I mean, players anywhere I've ever been, they want to be successful. So, you know, I think that we were in a position at ULM that they, they wanted to change. And, um, you know, and a lots, of, a lots of times I think, you know, people, whether you're adults or players, I mean, you have to be willing to change, you have to be ready to change. And, uh, and I think these kids were. So I think that was the, the biggest plus I had in terms of, the fact and you know I think the other thing too and is, that helped is that there are a considerable number of players on our ULM team that new players on Magnesis team and I'm very fortunate that uh, you know I think the the kids from Lake Charles said good things <laughs> going in so I think we had a little head start going there and uh, knew, knew uh, a lot of the players uh, I would say probably 10, 15 of them, I picked on them when I first got there and I, you know, whatever, oh yeah, that's right, I forgot you stiffed us when I was in Lake Charles and you went to Monroe, did you, over McNeese, and so there was a bunch of, I say a bunch, there was a good 10 or 15 kids that I had actually been to their school and met with them individually or into their home and met with them that McNeese <laughs> was very engaged in recruiting them and they picked ULM over McNeese, so I had a good relationship with some of them to start too. I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, you have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you have a few more scholarships, and but I think it's, uh, you know, it's uh, coaching's coaching. It's about relationships, and it's about trying to uh, to get young men to buy into what you're doing and do it with the maximum amount of effort. So, you know, I'm, oh, yeah, I mean, the competition, you know, you turn around and play, you know, a couple uh game guarantees and then, and then the level of competition the Sunbelt Conference is, is obviously really good so but you know that'll be different I'm sure once you know once I actually see it but thus far the first uh, seven months I guess seven months as I got the job or whatever seven eight months is it's just been coaching sir know him very well very well 
I actually did. I actually did. Then he turned around and hired two of the guys that I was trying to bring to uh, to uh, Monroe. But uh, no, uh, Willie and I got to be you know very close, pretty close there. And uh, when he went to Georgia Southern, we became actually closer in a sense that I called him for several things. One of the things somebody mentioned earlier here is it was the injury deal. I called Willie and what are you guys doing? How are y'all doing it? Tell me what you do on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, up to Saturday. Tell me about camp. How much do y'all hit? How often do you? Because the stretch they had where they went to two straight national championships, they didn't hardly lose any of them guys. You know, every week, Flanders and Bell and Sincere, I mean, those guys, they, where we were going through a lot of injuries, they weren't hardly going through any and stuff. So I reached out to Willie and, and Typical Coach Fred. So, I mean, he'd do anything he can to help you. And then he's actually, when he went to Sam Houston, and then, you know, he's called me for several things and stuff. So I, I have a lot of respect for him because he's won at every level he's been at. Thanks, guys.